गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन थैंक्स फॉर बींग अप लाइव एंड अवेक ऑफकोर्स इज दिवाली सीजन वी आर हेडेड टू कॉकटेल एंड डिनर आफ्टर दिस एंड द फायर वर्कस आर ऑन जस्ट सेटिंग इन टू द सेशन स्ट्रेट अवे ऑन माई राइट इज नंदनी चैटर्जी हाई नंदनी नंदनी कैन वी स्टार्ट नंदनी चैटर्जी चीफ कॉपरेट कॉम्स श्री सिमेंट समीर बजाज हेड ऑफ कॉपरेट कॉम्स एंड कॉपरेट अफेयर्स मेक माई ट्रिप and pradeep wadwa founder critical edge uh, on my left is uh, mr deepak jolly founder and director consortia consortia advisory dilip yadav uh, co-founder first partners and pranav kumar managing director alison so um, while we were just at the backstage talking about the topic of the day the big debate was that is there really a debate can we just request everyone to settle in thank you everybody so while we were just backstage talking and uh, you know thrashing it out that what is the agenda the pr agencies versus brand com who manages the narrative and perception is there really a debate nandini can i start with you so uh, can you hear me yeah you know so if this question was asked uh, a year back i would have said very clearly it's a comms team hmm you know but i think over time and now that i've joined over here i can see the perception changing slightly i still feel the comms team sets the narrative because you are there inside the organization you know your skin is in the game you are ultimately accountable responsible you understand the internal dynamics you know how things move you are able to get things cleared uh, but what what is important is where is the skill sitting you know and if if you have the skill if i look at pwc where i was before i joined here the the requirement was so large you know we had different businesses and that was another say another 10 12 plus different sectors 20 plus 30 odd groups you had different account management teams looking after them now a pr agency was not in a position to really do that work and you went into so much of detail that you were the one actually driving the entire thing and you brought the agency on to brief them and they handled the media relations and if they had some inputs at that point of time they did but today where i'm setting up a team and i'm grateful to the agency and i don't know how many agencies have that competency they've actually aligned a person with me who has a background of having been in consulting having been a journalist having been in industry has a dom domain knowledge so what he brings to the table and he's not some and the right attitude you know so he would not shrug and say that but ye to mera kaam nahi hai hum to media relations ke liye hain you know that's not the attitude the attitude is totally holistic that we are with you we are looking after the brand and even if i am having conversations let's say with media houses for sponsorship he is joining me in the conversation so he is joining me in the entire strategy and there are times and i am also surprised there are times that i say but how do you know that you know so the kind of value the kind of ideas the experience and across industry that he's able to bring is fantastic so, but i still feel the comms team sets the narrative if you have the skills great i don't know how many comms team have those skills that is where then the dependency is on pr agencies and so i'm going to quickly if, flip on the other <coughs> side and uh, invite so, you so in so can i say you can i take that one something? so you know what if uh, the comms team doesn't know the narrative and i'll give you an yeah, example exactly my point so it depends on you know uh, according to me what i've seen is it depends on the situation or the maturity level of the organization uh, for example and probably you know so the context of debate somewhere is totally misplaced and wrong i don't think there is a debate as such because think of companies probably this uh, topic was decided thinking of large companies matured enterprises 100 year old companies yeah. you know what about organizations which are early stage enterprises yeah. so for example companies like zomato flipkart nike probably never had a comms person yeah. uh, for the formative years and rightfully so and they've done well and they've established themselves pretty well for you know not having a comms team so who was setting the narrative in that situation yeah. it was purely the pr agency partners who they were working with the business leaders were working with and they were setting the narratives i'll give you a personal example 
so I was part of the team which brought in McDonald's in the country. That was some 30, 29 years ago, 1995 is when we launched McDonald's. And McDonald's never had any comms person for the five to six years of their presence in the country. And this is when they were in an extremely volatile environment and there were a lot of resistance to entry of multinationals at that point of time. So, and we worked very closely, but they hired a PR agency two years before they kind of opened the first outlet. So, who was setting the narratives? It was the comms, it was not the comms teams, but it was a PR agency teams which were kind of bringing in that value and setting the narratives. I'll come to I'll, you, sir, yes. Um, so, I would say, uh, you know, my 27 years has been on the client side, and as uh, Paroma was saying, uh, I had a seat on the table very early, mm. uh, reporting to the CEO way back in 1993. So, I think what is important is what, as Dilip said, the evolved companies got comms people early. But what about, uh, you know, people who will add on to their force because these companies have developed from a billion dollar company to a 10 billion, 20 billion, 30 billion dollar company. So that is where you need more and more people to see and look after the businesses. That's part one. Part two, you know, there was a time 40 years back, there were no PR agencies. I, I came into PR way back in 1987 and I would have a handful of public sector guys walking into a conference room who would be saying, oh, I used to do HR, but I'm doing PR now. Huh? So, so first of all, it is an evolution. The evolution has been, first, the PR function was recognized. Second, uh, because people didn't want a headcount with them, they started outsourcing it. Like uh, he got an outsourcing model for McDonald's, and that really helped the company to establish, and not unlike Cokes and Pepsis, who were you know, uh, thrown out of India way back in 77 and 55. So the, this is an important part of our conversation. Second, I think it's, uh, and thanks to Nandini for complimenting the, the agency, the intelligent PR agencies, but uh, I can assure you one thing. With, with the caveat that how many have that skill? How many have that skill? <laughs> but yeah. No, but, but again, as I said, that whether it's about people, it's people, 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 and people who have that attitude, who have that entrepreneurism, who have that ability to strike a relationship, who have the ability to tell the story, who have the ability to have give good ideas. And let me tell you, uh, there are people I've known who don't even talk, but are... RPR people. So, you know, I, I'm a bit surprised uh, at many times when I walk in and I say, oh, he said, no, I was actually uh, in an HR part uh, handling the company, so I was given this task, but I look at strategy and there are others to implement it. But the fact is, people who are good communicators will always be communicating well. Now about the war between the two sides. <laughs> I, I would have, Karan, where is Karan? So Karan, I would have been very happy if you had said, this is a war between PR and marketing. And I would have put my entire force behind it and said, guys, this is what is about PR. But again, as I said, we are from the same community. I may have handled 27 years of uh, my life in a corporate function, uh, before that a hotelier, and now, seven and a half years as a PR outfit. Now, uh, you know, and that PR outfit, I, we work with CEOs where uh, those companies were not yet involved, but they need help. And the, I, I think what companies need is help in crisis management in big numbers at that time. So we are there. We are there to support them. Yes, uh, I agree with Nandini. The narrative of a company has to be brought in by the CEO uh, he has to be convinced with the PR person that this is the narrative I will do. And I did that with Mindtree when it was being, you know, merged with l &D. And the CEO said, every quarter, give me a coaching on the quarterly results. And that helped him to make up his mind on what will be the messaging. That, so these are, with these few words, I would say, everybody has a space. 
and everybody has to strive for the best. Yeah, that's a good head start, but I think you've been itching to say something. Yeah, I think I would just like to fire a salvo from this side. I think uh, to uh, uh, the point earlier made by Dilip, um, and to Nandini's point also, yes, clients should set the narrative, but I can tell you on the agency side that agencies do a lot of that heavy lifting also. Yeah. So sometimes clients tell us, hey, can you write us a messaging document without any context, with no background, because they have to you know, uh, create the document internally and get some alignment. So I think that's where uh, we sort of work in the shadows for our clients a lot of times. So I think it's also about the thoroughness and the competence of the client. And you get clients of various sorts who are very evolved and mature and some who are not. And that's when the agencies really have to step up and, you know, sort of play that role. I'm going to come back to that yeah. because there's a lot of detailing there. But I would just uh, like this side uh, uh, invite both of your views, uh, Samir. And, uh, yeah. uh, see, I'm so not going to disagree with anything that has been said till now. But yeah, can I request everybody to settle down, please? It's just jarring to you know, speak like this. Uh, I think critically what happens is comms is science. Science, comms is arts, right? There is no definitive answer to any question. It totally depends on multiple factors, including maturity of the comms individual, maturity of the organization, maturity of the market you're playing in, yeah. right? And in today's world, especially with complexity of social, and every tweet, I mean, Samir in the previous session gave an example, where every tweet matters. So, the brand who will win will deliver when its comms team and the partner, and I don't believe in the word agency, mm. and the partner delivered together. I mean, I, for example, I come from a view that whosoever gives the idea doesn't matter. Right? The idea, the best idea has to win. And the best idea has to be implemented. Uh, one of the key traits I look for in my PR partner is somebody who will challenge me. Somebody who will say, you're wrong. And let's debate it out. And I would happily vacate my place if the counter logic is logical, right? The only difference is, and to which Nandini pointed out, because you are in the system, you understand the smaller nuances better. And therefore, that is where the comms individual has to play that critical role of passing on that important knowledge inventory to the partner so they can think in the same way, in the same constraints that a comms individual is facing because nuances is the real game in today's world. Your opening thoughts, Pradeep, on this. Yeah, sure. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay, great. So, um, you know, I have spent equal time on both the agency and the uh, client side, and partner side and the client side. <laughs> uh, and uh, when I was speaking to my team, and I said I am going to be speaking in favor of the, uh, the client, so they said, you know, this thought, and there was this puzzled look that is, this guy has gone bonkers. He's running an agency. He wants to speak in favor of the client. Uh, but to that, what I told them is that Karan phone kiya tha. But that I will, I will quote uh, my favorite Ty Tyrion Lannister's quote that always keep your foes confused. If they don't know who you are and what you want, they will not be able to guess what you're going to do. And therefore, I, I'm, I'm like the paplu here. I will switch on sometimes on the agency side and sometimes on the client side. Now, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I always like acronyms because they're easy to remember. So uh, one is that I don't feel a, uh, partners and clients are at loggerheads. I think they work together. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to give you, going to give you five uh, positives about the agencies and five positives about the clients and then we can just stretch it out because I think the better debate will be what do partners, uh, what do clients look for in partners and what do partners look for in clients. So this is just a suggestion but let me start with, so on the client side my acronym is Mika Singh, Mika S. What is Mika? M-I-K-A S. So the Clients usually have, if they are, you know, uh, media focused, they have very good deep relationships, media relationships with the, at least the beat guys and upwards to, you know, the, the uh, 
uh, editor. So one M is media relationships. The second and extremely important thing that they do is they do internal alignment. As in very, very difficult for an agency to do internal alignment because for large organizations, especially for large organizations, there are so many stakeholders at play. There are, you know, if it's a multinational company, you also have region, you also have the global, and sometimes you have to do all that alignment. All that alignment usually falls on the shoulder of the corporate communication team or the corporate communication head. K is knowledge of the business. Deep knowledge of the business is something that ideally the corporate communication team and the head should bring to the table, which many a times agencies claim they have, but I have seen more often than not that they don't have, the corporate communication team use, usually has a better. A is access to information and to people, leadership. So accessing information, especially at the time when you are either forming a narrative or managing a crisis is extremely important. So that information is something and access to people is something that the corporate communication teams does very well because they are in in-house inside. And S, which is last but not the least, they are the sutradhar. So the person has to, or the team has to be so strong that they are able to put everything together and also extract the best out of their partner so that you know they are able to uh, create the narrative, push it out, and create a good uh, uh, you know, reputation for the company. On the partner side, it's cred. The cred, you know, you have the, the paying app, but with a, with a double D. So the first is creativity and innovation. The, the uh, team looks at the partners to bring in new creativity, new innovation, because they are mostly focused, they're so much focused towards the business and managing internal stakeholders and, and creating narratives that creativity and innovation is what they are looking for from their partner. The second thing is reach. You know, as a small team, you may or may not have the reach uh, which your, your partner can bring. The third is the fresh eyes or the external perspective. Most of the time when you are in the thick of things, you are like a, a horse with blinkers on. So therefore you need to have an external perspective which your partner will bring. The D is diverse skill sets. Agencies are usually nowadays large, they work across multiple sectors and they bring in well, just one last point. Huh? Yeah. So okay, I know, I know. Really rich, rich Diverse skill sets. And the last one is deep relationships in areas where, so for example, if one is looking at FMCG, you may be look, uh, very, very have deep relationship with the FMCG guy. But the agency works across sectors. They have deep relationship with media across. So they bring different sets of relationships. So that's, that's the setting the stage. Sorry, I've done a little bit of your work. Over to you, back. So I would just go back to uh, Pranav's point here where he said that a lot of times agencies are kept in dark and then come back to the conversation that we were having backstage about there's a lot of stonewall that comes in between even before we have the A access point that we spoke about uh, as PR uh, people or AJ, uh, partners to the, high, to the CEO or you know, the leadership. How can we develop those specialized skill sets that Nandini so said that we should be if these things are coming in the way? No, no, I don't relate to stonewalling. I mean, why would you stonewall your agency? So, let's so see how that. I would say, relate to that. You know, so I would say that, you know, it's not so much of a debate between at an institutional level between uh, an agency function and a communicate cop, cop com function, but it's more of a clash of personalities which can happen. It totally depends on the individuals on the two sides. So it could be a situation that we are in a boat and we are in choppy waters and there, are, there is a captain who is a copcom person and there is a co-captain and suddenly the skill set of the captain is not relevant because the waters have turned and the situation has become very nasty and the skill set of the co-captain could be more relevant. So it depends. The situation can flip very quickly depending on what is the skill set of the individuals involved. Yeah. This is the way I look at it. Many times, individuals when they lack skills, and it's only human nature and not to be blamed, that when they lack certain skill set to keep themselves relevant, they will try 
some other means, some other methods. And I think that complicates the situation because we are dealing with people. Yes. <laughs> Basically, it's about insecurity. The if there is yeah. insecurity, probably that is a time and that will happen anywhere. And Even in a COPCOM team, it will happen. It will happen if you are getting external agencies. Yeah. Yeah. This in is not, insecurity, and this is not specific to communications yeah. function. This could happen in any function. It could happen in HR function. Yeah, exactly. It could happen in operations function. So, it's not specific to yeah. anybody. Dilip, yeah. I just want to make one point here. See, the difference in comms is that kind of an individual role, very small team, normally inside corporates. So what happens is the understanding of comms and its idiosyncrasies is not very clear to stakeholders inside. Hmm. And therefore the personality of the communications professional becomes even more important. How strong is he or she to yeah. actually sit in the boardroom, bang the table and say it's not going to happen. So, you know? No, so, so I'll give you exactly a, a, a different example. You know, I worked with at least uh, 20 top leaders who were in top positions in India. And uh, one thing which, while working with Sunil Mittal, I reported to him for two and a half years. And he was a guy who would lead from the front, would want to speak on everything. And I would say, hold on guys, hold on. <laughs> so, you know, uh, because we were a listed company and we were filing in US at that time. So there are leaders who would love to speak and are great speakers. But there are, I, I mean, my group of friends who are at least over 150 CEOs who would want and tell me, Deepak, I don't want to speak. I'm very uncomfortable speaking. Please coach me. Please tell me when to speak, how to speak, where to speak. And if as a comms leader in the company, he gets that comfort with his comms leader, he will be fine. But if he doesn't get it, then he will approach people like me and say, yeah, I need that help. I need that support because I'm not getting that comfort where I was told to speak and boss, one line came out of, totally out of context. So there are, so, so one thing which is there is experience is very, very important in this industry because you are dealing with a good news and you can create a crisis. And it has happened so many times. Because one word here and there, and you know, I, I still remember <laughs> one, one lady in Pepsi, uh, one, uh, she was interviewing the export leader, and she said, uh, this gentleman said, I am doing rice in 5,000 acres. And mm -hmm. next day news was five black acres. So I was like wondering, so what happened? What happened between the cup uh, and the lip was that so much of information flow went wrong. Now, that is where the communicator has to make sure, was there a recording? Was there a, uh, uh, this information sent on writing to the person? You know, or so on and so forth. So these are very, very critical things. Yeah. Because the, the leadership is looking at a comfort from the communication side, whether it is outsourced or in-house. That's a very interesting point you brought us to, um, sir, because an average size of a communication professional or a CMO, by the weight of it, the way that we are seeing it is really dropping down. Yeah. You know, there are younger, younger CEOs and younger CMOs and, and therefore the need and requirement for the specialist on board to sort of uh, steer the narrative. Pranav, I would like to invite your views. How important and critical does it uh, become in this time? Uh, you know, it's like when you uh, startup story, there's always this thing about you have to have the folks with the gray hairs in the room. Yeah. Uh, I think that's where we come in uh, and, you know, ha have to give our insight and expertise to those young, uh, young leaders who may or may not appreciate, you know, uh, how things work today from a media standpoint. You know, they're on X, they're on Instagram. We really have to sort of watch what they say. So I think that's where our role even deepens because they're really looking to us for that counsel and that guidance and that's where all the things we talked about on how I think clients should set agencies up for success. Uh, and it's not about stonewalling. Uh, I think it's about a true partnership. I mean, on the agency side, uh, what do we like? You know, we, we like to work for brands that are great, but we also like to work with clients who are also great individuals, right? Mm -hmm. Who, who, are, who uh, give us the freedom, the visibility, put us in, you know, in front of the executive sponsors, 
uh, and we're sort of front and center. That's when you feel empowered as an agency, and that's where you do your best work. That's so we clamor. A very good word. We and clamor for those kind of clients. Empower the agency. Yeah. That's exactly the yeah. thing to be done. So you know, yeah. uh, I've also seen uh, this personality thing happening at a CEO level because there are certain CEOs who would uh, have a lot of trust and faith in their comms leader, yeah. and certain CEOs who would not have that. Yeah. And uh, I've seen many. I've come across many situations where the comms leader would tell us that we just need somebody like you from outside to give a second voice to what we are saying because we are not getting heard as much. Now, that is something which uh, kind of, you know, puts agency comms people also in an in, in, in difficult, um, like interesting position. Of course, you're seconding it, but what if you don't have the same, uh, you know, you're not agreeing with the same thought process, then what do you do? So there is a divide which happens and which comes in. So I think uh, it's a personality thing at the end That's of the day. I, so I, think I, I just can happen many times from there. where I you just know what you one, want one and cue. you get them to kind of align. But you need to be aligned. The agency, the comms people need to be aligned. Otherwise, I, this can't go. But, no, but let, let, let me just yes, add one point you, because, uh, and from the agency side, because I've been there now seven and a half years, and I can tell you something. If you go prepared with research, uh, whether you do a desk research or you ask 20 people, you go and enter the client's room, it's a first meeting, the leadership team, one or two people are there, and you tell them, we uh, read so much about you, this is what uh, was there, this is what is the gap. Hmm. Believe me, 20% people may not like it, but 80% people go for you. And that's what is, makes the difference between a, a research-based, knowledge-based company and a company which is, okay, sir, tell me the brief. Hmm. The time has come when the brief will actually be determined by you in case you are ahead of them. Yes, so that is the so coming yeah. back to the can, 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 can I throw a spanner here? I can I throw a spanner here? I have had times when the agency is supposed to give this initial presentation, will sit with you to understand the business, understand the gaps, and then they come and present. They've all heard it from you. Absolutely right. But what I'm saying is, where no, there is no, where is there, where there is no Nandini, and the, uh, there is an RFA which says, okay, this is the small short RFA. Where do you start extrapolating that information? Yeah, and I think uh, coming back to your point, Nandini, when we were at the backstage, and I will invite your views also on this, is trust. Why should a leader listen to a comms person? Is also about like I gave my real, real life example that, okay, whatever happened two months back. Now, winning that trust with the leader and seizing that position that you have an authority and a seat at the table, where does it start from? See, it takes a lot of time. This is not going to happen overnight. And it happens as you start delivering results, it builds up. Um, there can be many spanners which can get thrown in. I mean, I, for example, in PwC, if I look at it, I had seven chairmen I handled. And there would be some who appreciated, some who probably did not appreciate it that much. Mm. You know, so though, then every time you are reinventing the wheel and you have to build the trust, build the relationship, it takes time. Now, if they take so much time internally, then where does the partner so stand a chance? Your trust, the trust of the leader in you is there. You I are can, in a I position to help. About, You're yes, in a position to right. help. Yes, please. So, just taking a cue from what uh, Deepak was saying, recently we uh, went to, me, uh, to present to a company which uh, makes uh, beauty supplements. So, you consume and you become beautiful, or you look, your skin looks better, your hair. And uh, we did a lot of research and we found out that they, they mark their uh, products at a premium. But their pack, the feedback that we got was, among other things, I'm just taking one example because I'd taken a lot of time earlier, don't want to be thrown out, uh, that their uh, packaging was not considered premium by customers. Oh. And we went there and, you know, among other things, I also told them this is the feedback. And, you know, what they had found out from their own research and they were already in the process of revamping their packaging. So this, this, one thing helped us build immediate trust. Obviously, trust has to be earned. It takes a hell lot of time. But the fact, the hunger that you have gone out of the way, and this was a brief meeting. They were supposed to brief us, but we already knew what they should have done. 
and it just turned the tide in our favor, just like that. And I think uh, that trust is a, is a two-pronged step for agencies because when you have a comms person change or this fresh people yeah. coming in, so we have two barriers to cross. I think one is we have to earn the trust of the client the per se, yeah. and then we have to earn the, client, the trust of the, you know, the CEO or the management, right? So it's always a, a bit of a uphill climb for agencies, especially when there's a client change, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I'd like and then the leader has to trust you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even if you have made a mistake, back you up. Totally agree. Because totally if, you, agree if the leader doesn't back you up, mm. believe me, uh, whether you're uh, on the company side or a partner side, yeah, then there will be always distrust. The, you, you are done practically like to, I would done. like to just uh, bring in Samir's point. I think you wanted to say something earlier. Also. No, I think the point I was trying to make was, on the partner side, there are two skill sets which are very varied and both bring their own value sets. So for example, if you were to hire X particular X agency, at one level you're getting the founder's expertise or advisory role, which may come once in a while, and the second layer is the servicing team. So this both varied sets are critical and they value add to, you know, to your deliveries as a comms, uh, comms individual. So one very critical asset. And second thing, I think as a comms person, we also need to realize that it's not about media anymore. It's about shaping behaviors of the corporate or the brand that you work for. Merely stating say, a thing or saying something doesn't mean anything. It's act, you have to act on it. So therefore, the comms role has become more complex now because you're not just merely communicating what is being done. You're shaping the narrative internally as well on how to actually behave in the world outside. Right? So it's very distinct from marketing, very clear, very clear KPIs of reputation coming to you, but it's all about shaping behaviors. And which is why a seasoned professional at the back end whom you can soundboard with becomes handy. And which is where the partner comes in. So I, I like I to give an example. the situations have become very complex with digital. You know, what you could have handled easily as a crisis. So, you know, this uh, narrative, yeah. this narrative yeah. building, we'll just this narrative me. building can come from somewhere, the junior most levels of an, an agency organization. I'll give you an example. And I'm talking about 1996. Uh, and this is again a McDonald's example. So McDonald's was spreading itself in the country and they were opening outlets one after another. We had a situation, I was a senior account executive working on the account. And we had a situation where in Ville Pale in Bombay, they had the restaurant ready, but it was not being allowed to open. And the opposition was coming from the community because there was a particular religious community which dominated the region, that, that particular locality, and they were very opposed to opening of the McDonald's outlet. And for almost a month, the business was trying all kinds of methods, including trying to draw political support to make the community understand that this restaurant must open. So finally, I... I just, I just um, like to just... Uh you know, if anybody is not finding this session very useful, can really step out because everybody's time is important. So, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so we, uh, so I flew from Delhi, and all, all first thing I did was to try and go on the ground to find out what's going on. And of course, it was not easy to talk to the community because there was a temple, there was a community leader, and all of that. So I disguised myself as a, as one of the community members. I draw, uh, kind of wore a kurta pajama and I sticked inside the temple and sat to listen to the people what they were talking. And uh, it was amazing what I found. It was a very simple insight. The insight was the concern of the community was that the burgers, the vegetarian and non-vegetarian burgers looked exactly the same. Their concern was that our children will not be able to distinguish between the two and they'll bite into a non-veg burger and become, develop a taste for it. And the solution was even simpler. We knew that McDonald's in India was coming uh, with a different model where they had two separate kitchens for vegetarian, non-vegetarian. The burgers were clearly identified separately. And these people did not know and because they were probably not reading media as much. So a very simple solution which was adopted, and this really came from the ground, yeah. was to kind of print a lot of pamphlets and deliver to every household in that locality again and again which had these pictures, visual pictures of how to identify a non-veg and a veg burger. And within about 
40 days, we were, we had opened the outlet, it was doing roaring business, and it was a success. So, the narrative was defined by a very simple insight coming from the ground, from a foot soldier, which was me in this case. So, what I'm saying is, in crisis situations particularly, you know, uh, external input on the narrative can be extremely valuable to clients, and we've seen this again and again. And I think, however, I completely agree that the communication teams are best place to manage internal stakeholders because that's not easy to do as well. Correct. No, so one point from here. Crisis doesn't knock at your door, and I want to come in. So crisis just happens. And when crisis happens, are you ready? Now, the first thing usually people say, okay, it is 9.30 at night, uh, XYZ newspaper is doing a report, I want it to be stopped. Wait a minute. Man, what, when did you brief me about the crisis? 9.30. Okay. Hey, do you want a quote? Do you, this is a respectable newspaper. Now, whether in the company or outside the company, these are challenges which will happen time and again. So one thing about both the agency side and the PR side of the company, you have to be 24 by 7. I was hired by Dr. Ashok Ganguly and Levers at that time where he said, guys, we are going to explore the way we are going to take over the companies. You guys are an extension of the chairman's department. And we felt damn good about it. And he said, look, I expect you 24 by 7, but on the day there is no work, I don't want you there. I don't want to create more crisis. But that is the leadership talking to you and having that trust in you and saying, OK, I understand. If 9.30, that crisis has happened, yeah. I will also guide you what needs to be done and what you need to add till 11.30, 12 at night and make sure my headline is balanced. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think uh, that's a point well made. But coming back to your point, uh, Dilip, and uh, your, your point, uh, Pradeep Abba. So what I'm listening really is that comms is really going beyond its you know, traditional uh, uh, yeah, media relation or traditional archetype defined roles. So what we are hearing in these examples is social listening, a lot of observation, market research, and then creating a comm solution, gaining that trust and then creating that comm solution. So is that the kind of specialized approach uh, that we are looking at from our partners? Uh, when Absolutely. We are, See, today side? what's happening, if you want to run any campaign, or if you're trying to reach a particular target audience and you have a certain messages, you're not thinking just media. You're thinking 360 degrees. And there would be, could be an element of sponsorship. Now, even in that, your media agency, your PR agency can be shouldering with you because there is so much involved. At the end of the day, it is building the brand. You know, and that is the outlook and mindset with both the agency and the comms team need to have, and it is happening. Yeah, I, I'll just add on to the point here. See, I think the audience approach has come into comms as well. So mm -hmm. it's not just limited to advertising. Mm -hmm. When we reach out to the youngsters today, we know they don't read newspapers. They're not going to read the Times of India print or AT print. It has no value. My daughter doesn't read it. She's going to be on short. She's going to be on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Then how do you create campaigns which can fly on organic, organically? That is where the real game now is, or is expected from comms. From just the mere traditional way of looking at it, this is a very interesting layer. And if you can capitalize on it, then you grow inside as a thought leader, you know. So as we see, that the, the role is only becoming more layered and more special. And, and, and the best part is, yes. if the, the comms leader will be taller, if he gets a chance to operate another department for, say, two months, three months in an organization because that will make him look tall, understand the problem, and look where the leadership is wanting a role for the comms and why uh, that uh, issue of yours, stonewalling that issue, yeah. that becomes much, much better. Yeah. And I'll give you one example where huge appreciation for the agency. I was in Airtel, and I wanted to do a, a press conference in Lucknow uh, only on a particular date because I, I had no other uh, venue for, um, no other date for the CEO and the chairman. So I told them, they said, all banquet hall books are, nothing is available. We ended up doing on the PR agency's sub advice in a cinema theater. And they filled the 300 people in that hall. 
and it was a PBR. We booked the hall, we did the press conference first time in the history of <laughs> PR at that time. So that is the kind of support the PR agencies can give you and make you more look more successful at that given time. Yeah, I think and before and we give an example of what I'm doing today, for example, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a campaign, campaign where there is no media, entirely digital, but the agency has a media mandate, but they've come forward to support and think. Business may come later on digital, but they step forward now, and that is the partnership that one expects. Yeah, so adaptability, agility, responsiveness, uh, you know, going beyond the roles. I think before we just call this session a wrap, uh, towards the end, one question on crisis management. Agency side, uh, the partner side, and the client side. Who do you think can really set the tone better, take hold of the situation, or again, are we calling it a hand and glove situation? So maybe with you, we could yeah, start okay. this time. <laughs> so, you know, there is unfortunately no right answer. Yeah. Because it is, it will depend upon who has the right skills, what the issue is, and what role can each play. So it's a partnership, and that is why we are calling them partners and not agencies. Even if you call them agencies or by any other name, it is a partnership. And I'll just, can I take and give an example, or it's just a wrap? 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, so for a very, very important um, crisis situation, uh, we needed to be present at a given point of time in 12 different locations, and if I was the Copcom person at PepsiCo. If I did not have the support of my PR agency then, that was not possible. So it all, as I said, will depend upon what is the situation, what do you require, and is there a partnership? Partnership there, inviting views from here. So, I think yeah. having said all of that, uh, agencies, I think yes, it has to be a symbiotic partnership, but I think there's one or two fundamentals that agencies uh, probably are better at is because they bring an outside-in approach. They're able to um, uh, help clients feel the pulse of an issue, the tonality much better. Um, I think clients might get a, lost, a bit lost in internal uh, considerations and compulsions and the legalese too much. That's where you need you know, folks like us to come in. And also, I think at some point, agencies also bring a lot of uh, equanimity in a crisis because clients may be panicking yeah. or they, it may be a very stressful kind of a situation. I think that's where we, sort of, that's where the best of us comes in in terms of counsel, so I would, I would add that. Yeah. I let Dilip are, speak and yeah. then So I would add that, you know, many times I've seen that when a crisis hits a client, probably it's the first time for them in that situation. Why, as, at an agency side, I would have probably been <laughs> dealt 10 more such situations yeah. before. So I know exactly what is to be done and there is no uh, and there is no kind of question in terms of what is going to be the best solution over there and that really really can really quickly snap the whole situation in your favor. So that is so basically by virtue of the fact that you have more versatility because you're exposed to the, so much more, more sectors, and you're, you're yeah. dealing with different sectors and not all organizations or uh, sectors are at the same uh, you know timeline of maturity. So people are probably experiencing something today. Somebody else has already experienced that probably many, many months or several years before is something which is a big reality in, in, in Last everything that we do. Last 30 seconds from you, sir. Okay. And then so continue. let me give you the crisis management. Yeah. So most of the leadership generally comes and tells, Deepa, this is happening. Oh, my God. This is the, uh, the, the sky is, uh, bro you know, fallen on us and blah, blah, blah. My team now in the agency side comes our client is in trouble, blah, blah, blah. And here, there is adrenaline rush. Because this is what you've been doing for 38 years. Client after client, or, or event after event, and all the learnings, believe it or not, come so handy. And maybe the crisis may be new in the client case. Mm. But we know deploy this, and deploy here, because we are the eyes and ears and hands and legs yeah. of the company. And this is the important time where we will show our metal because we know after this, this will happen. Yeah. After this, this will happen. Yeah. So we already te tell them the sequence of events and that becomes, and times of this mistrust 
it becomes an important factor of building trust with the leadership. Yes. So I have a very interesting situation. I'll take 30 seconds to tell you that, where a flare-up on digital media, on social media, a minister making a statement on the company doing something which was absolutely wrong, you were not involved, the immediate reaction is negated. And the agency advised, negated, you were not involved, you nothing to do. But because there was trust in the organization and because the agency was just being reactive, I could push back and say, no, hold your horses, let's wait. And we found because it was a minister, the entire dialogue and discussion went off onto the government and the organization nothing to do. So sometimes I think it is a strength of the internal person who's there, yeah. which is very important. Yes, if it's a startup, maybe you need Sameer, to go I would, outside. Your, your last uh, parting views on this. I really have nothing to add. I think everybody has said broadly the same thing. Uh, in the in crisis situation, I think the integration between comms and the partner side becomes even more important. Yeah. Because you're learning from what has already happened mm -hmm. and you still want to change what may happen, right? Because if it's going to happen, like it has happened in the past, then the role of comms becomes, you know, diminished. So that's so it. Time's up for thing. us. And yeah. I think we are always better together. Let's keep going stronger for together. Sure. No yes. debate about that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being uh, such a patient audience. I know the food is being served and we all can break out. Thank you.